On this episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show, we talk about whether you should delay range of motion after rotator cuff repair surgery. The Ask Mike Reynolds Show. Helping people feel better, move better, and perform better. Before we get to the podcast, I wanted to make sure you knew about my free online course on the introduction to performance therapy and training. If you want to learn how to get started optimizing and enhancing performance, this is the course for you. Head to MikeReynolds.com slash performance to sign up today. Welcome back, everybody, to the latest episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show. I'm here up in Boston at Champion PT and Performance with our crew of physical therapists and strength coaches answering your questions. Anything you want to talk about, head to MikeReynolds.com, click on that podcast link, and you can ask us questions. That we're going to answer. Uh, let's see. Who do we have today? Uh, let's see. We have Dan Pope, Dave Tilly, Mike Scaduto, Lenny Macrina, Jonah Monlock, and, you know, a new addition, Anthony Vedetto, who's, you know, a new physical therapist with us. You may remember him. We're going to have to dig out which episodes you ask questions as a student, Anthony. Do you, do you remember, like, did that set, like, a like such a tone in your life that you even remember the episodes that you read questions for? I honestly don't even think that I asked questions. So this is the first time I'm actually <laughs> speaking on the podcast, which is great. I think that's right. I think we didn't even trust you to read questions at the time. No. And then somehow we <laughs> hired you. Amazing. I think but... you got tired of doing it, Mike. That's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that might have there, there was a little change with all you, that. You would read like five or six <laughs> episodes. You're like, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> well, that's how we include the students. It's it's we'd like to be inclusive of the students, get a little shout out. You know, your schools, your classmates, you know, they get to see you again here. But uh, speaking of that, Lenny, uh, who do we have for students today? Well, speaking of schools and classmates, we happen to have classmates that are our students. We have Ella Hauser, Devin Limerick from New York University, the beautiful city of New York. The Big Apple, some would say, and Tyler Farr from Pacific University. There's a school in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, and Tyler <laughs> goes to that one, so... Tyler, uh, welcome. Uh, up in Oregon. Wow. So we get we have New York and Oregon right now. I think we we got Wait, do we say Oregon or Oregon? When who's we? The of people correct, say Oregon, correct, but, correct people or incorrect but, people? I think the incorrect people say Oregon, right, Tyler? <laughs> <laughs> now, T- Tyler may have to start this episode off, but who wants to read our first question uh for today's podcast? Who's up? Yeah, I will. Uh Danielle from California. Uh, says the surgeons I work with recommend patients wait 12 weeks until they start physical therapy after rotator cuff repair. Um, she said they don't want the patient to do too much range of motion and injure the repair. Do you think right. you need to delay the start of range of motion after rotator cuff repair? Or not? I mean, wait, I mean, wait, where was this again? What what's what state is? And I'm already fired up. Where was this again? <laughs> California. <laughs> don't have shoulder surgery in California. <laughs> I'm just kidding, people. We love California. Seems a little conservative. That's my um, I mean, that's California, right? I mean, to the T. <laughs> but uh, anyway, anyway, anyway. Uh, so, all right. So, so Lenny couldn't even get through the question without like yeah, you, almost, was, you, almost, <laughs> you almost choked on your water there. Um, I don't know. Like, I, I I would like to start with Lenny because obviously he's this is probably going to be his whole episode probably. But um, you know, I mean, we we move from an environment with. A group of surgeons, right? A lot of people think we just, you know, just work with one doctor down, down in Birmingham when, when we were with Dr. Andrews. But we, we were, there was a large group of surgeons down there, and I think we were all on the same page that, you know, we didn't necessarily like to 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 wait this long. So, you know, as physical therapists, we're always bothered when they say, "Hey, no rehab for the first three months." Like that's enormous, right? But, um, you know, Len, what do, what do you think? Like, how how does this make you feel? Well, like, let's talk about your yeah. feelings. I wish I was wearing some kind of heart rate monitor as Devin was reading that question. So you could see like the spike. (laughs) No, I mean, that scene, I've never heard. I mean, 12 weeks. That's like, that's like something I've never heard of. I've it's usually four to six weeks and my mind can handle that. It's not what I like. Cause like you said, we used to see people a day out of surgery, like literally post-op day one, we were doing range of motion on them. Um, that was 20 years ago. So that was when we were doing single row repairs and, you know, maybe it was a little bit more open and mini open type repairs where there's a bigger view of the, of the shoulder and in theory, a better repair, but I don't even think so. Now the double row repairs that are arthroscopic, 
uh, do just as well, if not better. So you got to consider what's being repaired, how much tissue, right? Um, is it a one centimeter or a five centimeter repair? Is it just an isolated supra versus supra infra and sometimes even teres? Um, is the person older? Do they smoke? Is it a worker's comp case? Um, comorbidities? So many different things to consider. The, the tissue type, the tissue quality that the surgeon saw when he or she was in there. Um, so many different things to just put a blanket statement of 12 weeks is preposterous. Um, smaller repairs tend to get, uh, I would say, stiffer and need uh, a little bit more love earlier on, and they do well. It's the bigger repairs that we may want to be a little bit more conservative on, and I would say maybe wait a couple weeks, four weeks maybe, maybe at the most, but you just have to adjust your rehab accordingly and not push through the motion because when people come in at 12 weeks out of surgery, they, you now have probably a higher rate of um, chronic regional pain syndrome. They haven't moved their joint. Mentally, they're just shot from not being able to use that joint for 12 weeks. Um, weakness, stiffness, um, you have so many things you are now fighting, but the surgeons want a, a repair that is, you know, strong and firm and not going to re-tear. But I think the same thing statistically happens in the research if you have early motion versus delayed motion. Usually the delayed motion is six weeks. So I don't know where the 12-week thing is coming on it's probably insurance based the insurance won't approve it or you are limited in visits and now you can do more you can do motion and strengthening at 12 weeks and the doctors are trying to capture that window that envelope of uh, what you can do and use those visits i'm guessing because none of the research that i've seen says wait 12 weeks so i mean that's my soapbox i say get them in earlier like within two weeks i think they do fine especially smaller repairs big repairs go slower and it's just a matter of when you take them um through active range of motion it seems like active range of motion or strengthening stuff is the key that can lead to higher retail rates if you do it too early then you're going to put them at a risk of retail so if you are patient and work on their motion and do isometrics and basic stuff they will be fine, especially if they don't have significant comorbidities. If they do, you adjust according. Do you right, promise? Do, do you promise? Because you just said they'll be fine. So now every <laughs> PT listening to this is going to go against physician orders and do it. You promise well, that. Statistically, they do fine if you look at the research, but you can't go against the orders of the physician because <laughs> you uh, you'll be violating your, your your oath of honor or whatever. <laughs> I, I, I I think I talk to more people online or you know just around the country. But I actually have heard of the twelve weeks before. The, that doesn't like surprise me as much as you, but I, I will say I think you're right, Len. I think we have kind of settled in the four to six range more than than we had in the past. But there are certainly doctors that said twelve weeks in the past, and, and you know I, I guess it didn't. I mean it annoyed me as much as it annoyed you for lots of reasons but um you know i would say it didn't surprise me as much but again it's very regional like you, the physicians in your area may yeah. feel differently right and and even different yeah. doctors and different practices will do that but um dan pope i know you've done some deep dives on some of this stuff here right? what, what are your thoughts on the science of this yeah you know it's a good point you know I, I think a lot of times what doctors are doing and it just rubs us the wrong way is that they're trying to protect their patients right and there's a lot of retairs, obviously. And one of the issues is that the retairs are occurring mostly between zero and three months, and then some between three and six months. But what can a surgeon do to protect the patient as much as possible when they're not able to follow the rehab at all? They can just say, don't move this for the first three months and hopefully reduce those re-injury rates. But the other thing is like people are retearing. If you look at these same studies, while they still have their sling on and they're not doing uh -huh. physical therapy. Yep. So it's not completely fair. I do think that what's happening is that the surgeon is trying to keep the patient as safe as possible. Obviously this is crazy. When I heard the 12 week, I was like, wow, that's really a long time. Um, <laughs> and I, I did do a lit review. And what's funny is I forgot a lot of it. So I had to go back and listen to it. If you guys want, maybe we can send like the episode out at some point in the show notes or something. I don't know if you could reach out to me, if you guys really want like a deep dive on this, cause I broke it down a lot at one point but largely for passive range of motion, just like Lenny said. And these studies are all over the place and they're also mixed. What you'll find is that if you start passive range of motion early for the large and massive tears, you do have a slightly increased retear risk, right? And that's mixed. So it's not every study that's showing this. So some of the studies show if you start passive range of motion early and some of these studies, it's tough because there are a lot of meta-analysis out there. They're lumping together lots of different start times. So some people are starting like post-up day one, some are starting post-op day two, 
or excuse me, post-op week two, some are starting post-op week four, and they'll lump that into one group and call that like the early, and then delayed is like six, eight, 12, right? So, you know, take it all with a grain of salt there, but I think the big takeaway, like Lenny said, is that if you're starting really early for the large tears and massive tears, you slightly elevate that retear risk, right? But for the small and medium, what you'll also find in the research, if, if you start them sooner, their outcomes are better, this is usually in the short term, so like six months and before, but for pain, outcome measures, and range of motion all improve. So um, again, I, we have quite a bit of research on this, but it's not definitive. I think the big takeaway is like, are you dealing with a smaller medium? Or are you dealing with a massive uh, or large? And I do think that uh, that's a little crazy for a physician to say 12 weeks, but I get what they're trying to accomplish, I think. You know? Right. I mean, we know that their, you know, their intentions are, are, we know what their intentions are, why they're doing it. It, it makes sense. Um, yeah. I mean, you look at these studies and I think it actually supports that it's okay to start some early range of motion. If you actually look at the studies in detail, uh, the people that failed, fail early and they often fail before PT even starts, whether it be early or late. So showing that PT is not the reason. And you know what? I took a huge step back when I started kind of like really thinking that way about that. And I wondered here now, if these tears are happening early, right? Like they're, they're probably happening early, meaning they probably were never going to work anyway. Right. And we haven't even started PT yet for a lot of those. Then what about their activities of daily living? Right. And then Daniel, I'll put it in the show notes here with, you know, Dan's uh, episode there. I think he talks about here, but I, I've done some presentations on this too. The things you do around the house are very very stressful is the wrong word, but the, the things you do around the house and with activities of daily living stress the repair. So I think it's, it's, you know, it, it's almost worse to say, don't go to physical therapy because we can't guide them. We can't tell them what to do, not to do. We can't slow them down if they're going too fast. We can't like almost just like be their guide through this process. Right. So, you know, that's what I thought of through this process, but um, uh, who else might you get any thoughts? Yeah, I was just going to add to to what we were saying from a patient perspective. I think the first 12 weeks is when they have a ton of questions. Um, they're really unsure as to what they can do, you know, how long, even how long they should be wearing a sling. Sometimes the post-op reports are a little contradictory that we get from, from doctors. Um, so they have a ton of questions. I think, you know, as physical therapists, we're well, uh, we're able to answer a lot of those questions for them, make their recovery process a little bit smoother maybe that leads to improved outcomes in the long term because they had some guidance early on um maybe even more than you know what we're doing hands on with them in the clinic just giving them that guidance for the first 12 weeks seems to be super important yeah and think about how many times you've had somebody come in early and they're they're struggling right they're in a lot of pain they can't sleep and you're like has your physician prescribed you a shoulder sleeper pillow right and <laughs> you know like something like that like those are the things where you can jump in but you know, there's this pillow that you can you can wear at night and you sleep in, and I mean, it, their satisfaction goes through the roof. I mean, the Heels testimonials, on, <laughs> the testimonials on the website are amazing. But like, it's just little things like that where you can jump in and say, like, "Oh, you're struggling with sleep, for example." Like, I have some thoughts on that, right? Uh, and we'll put a link to the shoulder sleeper pillow in the show notes this week too. But lots of show notes this week. Like we're not real show notes people. Sorry, yeah, I know. We're, we're, we're gonna do it this week. So everybody's sending this. <laughs> but, uh, but but anyway, so I, I you know moral of the story. I think kind of wrapping up this episode here. Like uh, yeah, if your physician does that, it is what it is, right? Hopefully over time. Um, you know, it, that physician will maybe start seeing that maybe their people are behind, maybe they're getting stiff, maybe they're getting sore. And then maybe as they get a little bit more comfortable, right? Maybe this is a new physician that just wants to be successful, right? And doesn't know that, you know, the holistic approach might be the best way. So, you know, my thought is just, you know, we can do the best to educate, but I think going in guns blazing to a physician and trying to show a meta analysis that, say that they can do range of motions, probably not a good start to relationship. But, you know, over time, I think maybe if they learn about you as a physical therapist and they trust you specifically, 
maybe they will send you patients earlier because they know you like you and trust you versus them just being blanket 12 weeks because they don't know you and they'd almost rather their their patients do nothing than bad therapy so maybe you just need to prove to them that you're you're a reputable source that's somebody that they can trust and i think hopefully um you know that might you know really help and then you could always move danielle that's the other thing too but anyway sorry uh look look, look up <laughs> look up the smith paper look up the smith paper in 2004 shoulder and elbow surgery and it'll be eye-opening on emg study just saying smith at all smith and paget 2004 shoulder and elbow surgery put it in the show notes i'll tweet it i'll tweet it i'll tweet it, I'll tweet it. I mean, put, it put it in the show notes i'll put it I, in my tweet twitter notes i think we put it in the show notes i almost feel like this is a great tv episode i feel like you know we'll wrap it up and then lenny hits you with like the cliffhanger the so you're like, like look it up <laughs> like, we, it'll blow your mind yeah. we don't know why it'll blow our mind but we just blew our minds so we're trying uh, to end the episode so i was trying to end it <laughs> i mean great episode so all right so everybody send me links slack me links i'll put them in the uh, in the show notes um you have 10 minutes to slack me links but uh yeah uh appreciate uh that one danielle great question uh, if you have questions, remember, head to MikeRonald.com and ask away. We're here to answer your questions. And please, please, please subscribe, rate, and review us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And we will see you on the next episode. Thank you so much.